Yo people, sorry I don't know why it cut out, uh, but join in, join in. I've been talking about top tips um, to help you perform at your venue, top tips in performing at a venue, man. Um, sorry it cut out. Esther, I was saying that this venue reconnaissance does also apply to spoken word artists, but just even more so the audience. Who are you aiming your spoken word at? Yeah, so I just wait for you lot to join, join back in. Sorry about that. I don't know why it cut out. Esther, yeah, so, sorry. What I was saying was that um, for an audience, I think it's very key. Do venue reconnaissance for the venue, but also, like, definitely do people reconnaissance, like, audience reconnaissance. Who are the type of people coming to this event? And I don't know how you can find it. I'll probably ask the promoter, but who are the type of people coming to this event? And what poetry or what spoken word would best fit for them, okay? Um, even down to, like, the subject matters and the type of people that are coming, what are their type of backgrounds, what would connect with them? And also, at the same time, think about how you can actually go against the grain. Maybe they're always used to hearing a certain type of spoken word. Maybe they're always used to hearing a type of, you know, topic. Go in, you can, by knowing that and knowing what your audience already expects, you can go totally against the grain and really stand out. Um, Claude, sorry, Claude, what was your question again? I think I can try and check it on my iPad. Um, but if you let me know. So, Claude, yeah, type in, type in. What was your question? <coughs> Big up to the people logging in. I've just been sharing my top tips um, for performing at a venue. If you are late <laughs> to the live, um, go to part one and you can hear all I've been talking about. Um, and I'm just answering questions here. So if you've got any questions for performing at a venue, what are the top tips or what could you do? Type them in right now. Let's 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 get the, let's get this popping. Is there anything, Claude says, is there anything you wish event organisers considered? Do you know what, Claude? If, if you could do this one thing, <laughs> every artist would love you and every person coming speaking would love you. Make sure your sound engineer monitors the sound check and logs the sound check. I've only seen a maximum of three, actual three, sound engineers who um, monitor the levels that they did at sound check because what happens is we do our sound check and the engineer says is that good and we say yeah but the sound engineer hasn't logged what volume it should be at or how much bass or how much uh treble should be on you know the track etc so when it comes to actually performing or speaking it's just done anyhow. It's just done willy-nilly. It's just done off the cuff because nobody actually has a record of, right, for IC, this needs to be the level, this needs to be the level, this needs to be... Obviously, that takes, that takes time and only a few people have automated switchboards where it would just do it automatically. But I would say, Claude, like, get your sound engineers to really do sound checks, to really actually log the settings for each individual person just so that the people know that their time wasn't wasted doing a whole sound check. All right, so I think that's very, very key. Um, is there anything else you wish an event organiser considered? No, no. I think For me personally, I think that's a big one. Just have sound engineers that are willing to put in the time to log the different settings and the different volume levels for each person. All right, because I think that's, that's, key. that's key. Sound is key. Sound is key. Um... Moses says, please can I have a list of this open mic, these open mic venues any way possible? Um, a list of open mic venues. I would say I do venue reconnaissance, but I, <laughs> I also do event reconnaissance. And when I say event reconnaissance, I search for events, like I search hard for events. Everybody used to hate Facebook event invitations. Um, but I would say Go through all your event invitations on your Facebook and start to find out the ones that do open mic. Go onto Twitter, type in open mic, type in London, and just start to find all the open mic sessions that are around it. They're out there, but you need to search them. 
Also, go to shubs.com, S-H, I'm going to type it, can I type it in here now? Um, S-H-O-O-B-S dot com, shubs.com. They have a list and kind of like a, a, a database of all the events that's happening in London. Go in there on the search bar, type in open mic, and you'll just see, you'll just see loads just there, just there. Um, open mics are very good to really get yourself out there. They're very good to put yourself in the lion's den, like, I've been to events, yeah, and I've done open mic, and you think you're good. I, I would go there and think, yeah, watch when I drop this lyric, yeah? Watch, watch when I drop this lyric. Silence. Because in your bedroom and in your mind, you think you're good. Take it out of your bedroom and your mind, take it out into, in a sense, the real world. Then you'll really see where you stand against another rapper, another singer, another... Um, instrumentalist you know so really i think you should really really use your your um open mic opportunities to just fall use your open mic opportunities to fail use your open open mic opportunities to really meet and connect people definitely man and um, claude what else can event organizers help performers give their best performance other than sound <laughs> engineer um you know what actually sit down claude sit down with Whoever you invite, and I put, you probably already do this because you like to do big things today. Um, but sit down with whoever you invite to perform or speak. Spend, I would say, spend time explaining the vision of the event. Like, like spend time sitting with them. Go Costa Coffee. Go Pret a Manger. Like individually, I would say individually, go and spend time with them. Um, Letting them know what the vision is for the event, but also how they can help that vision. What is their vision as well? Yeah, those things, I think those are important because when people invite us to events, they, I don't know, when people invite us to events, people book us based on our talent. And sometimes that's just it. I heard you're good, I want you to come. But, Rarely do you find promoters ask about the person behind the name. All right, so I see that's not my new, that's not my name. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That's my stage name. I was blind, but now I see. That's where that comes from. My name. If you want to know who I am, I'm Top Ed Chidozi. That's my name's Top Ed. That's my real name. That's who I am. And so I think sometimes it helps if promoters just invest a bit more time into not only explaining their vision, but seeing what is that person's vision. What are you trying to achieve? And how can we come together to uh, make it happen together? How can we both get what we require out of our visions in this little, you know, collaboration in a sense, in an event? So invest time in the artist, in learning about who the artist is and where they're trying to go and where you're trying to go. Because I think once you do that, both of you come to the same place and um, you actually kind of forge deeper relationships rather than, yeah, he booked me once, you know. So, yeah, that's what I think. If you can do a booking section one day. Andrew, what do you mean? How do you mean? Are you, you're asking me? Let me know, you're asking me. Um, I almost um, fell off stage once, I remember, actually. That was a madness. Make sure you see where you're walking. Yeah, don't fall off stage because it will be on YouTube in two seconds. It will be on Facebook in one second. And before you can say anything, it will already be on Twitter. Yeah. Um, yeah, any more questions? Holler at me, yo. Any more questions? What questions you got? What's been your worst experience as a performer and what made it so bad? Oh, man. I, oh, even when I think about this, I was performing at Jazz Cafe. Now, just that name alone lets you know how big a deal of it, how big a deal it was for me. Jazz Cafe. And I said to myself, Ice, you know what? We have to kill this. Now, I was doing a live set. I was doing a live set, had a band, backing vocalists. 